friends. This is John, your host from Dairyland Frights and Packers Blitz. And I want to tell you, I've been using Ollie Two for my podcasting for over a year now, and I love it. And if you're looking for an easy and convenient solution for creating podcasts, Ollie Two is definitely worth checking out. It's a great tool for podcasting beginners and professionals alike who want to make their creation process easier and faster so they can focus on other areas of their show. And I use it for editing and I love it. I can edit something really quickly and get my show out there and get it to my audience. So please try Ollie too. You can try it a week for free. They have a 30 day money back guarantee. So you really have nothing to lose. And like I said, I love Ollie too. Check it out and uh, you'll love it. Hello, spooky friends. This is John, your host from Dairyland Frights, the paranormal podcast that covers everything spooky, creepy, and mysterious in the Midwest. And today, I'm covering one of the lesser-known tragic family stories and hauntings in the Midwest, the Tinker Swiss Cottage in Rockford, Illinois. And I want to get a shout out to Expedition Entity, Dan and Larry, who investigated this house and had numerous paranormal experiences. So my sources today are hauntedus.com website, Illinois, Tinker Cottage website, and the Ghost Hunters website. So let's talk a little bit about the history first. The Tinker Swiss Cottage was built between 1865 and 1870, and it was the residence of Robert Hall Tinker, mayor of Rockford in 1875. Tinker moved to Rockford in 1956 and worked as an accountant for Mary Dorr Manny, the wealthy widow of John H. Manny, of the Manny <laughs> Reaper Works. Uh, that is a great name, right, folks? Manny Reaper Works. I like that. Uh, inspired by his many travels to Europe in 1862 and his love for the architecture of this Switzerland tinker designed, uh, he designed... Mr. Tinker designed a 27-room Swiss-style chalet, a mansion actually, on a bluff overlooking Rockford's Kent Creek. And while working uh, at the Manny Reaper Company, I love Manny Reaper Company, don't you? Tinker fell in love and later married his employee, Mary Dorr Manny. Together, they were one of Rockford's most influential couples. Tinker became mayor of Rockford in 1875 and was the founding member of the Rockford Park District and the CEO of Northwest and IC Rail Lines. Now, here's where the tragedy starts, because everything starts great, right? He he comes in, he makes this cottage, he falls in love. And like in every story that I I tell you and you've heard before, well, now the fun starts. And when I mean fun, I mean tragedy. So Tinker lost his left foot because of a train accident in 1900. So what happened was his foot got caught underneath the rails. Oh, this is just terrible. And uh, basically just took his foot. So it was a he fell under a freight car near a water tank and had his left foot crushed. Now he was hurried to the hospital, but uh, unfortunately the foot was taken above ankle by Dr. Fitch. So a little over a year later, after he lost his leg, His wife died in their own home at the age of 72. Again, Tinker wrote in his journal, another simple entry, Wednesday, September 4th, 1901, wife died at 3 a.m., had been almost unconscious and 
without pain for two days. Mr. Mrs. Emerson and Mr. Church prepared obituary notice for Rockford Gazette. Uh, that to me is kind of the way people talk. It, it wasn't really full of emotion. It was just, oh, the wife died. Okay, they took care of it. Okay, move on. But he had a next journal entry, can, and this will easily send chills down your spine. So here's his next journal entry. Thursday, September 5th, 1901. Spent the night alone with the casket in the sitting room. Took my signet ring from cold hand. So imagine this. He just sat alone with his wife, who's in the casket, and they just took a signet ring off his cold hand. That's so sad. I mean, it's unbelievable. So, obviously, they say bad luck comes in three. So, he lost his leg. His wife died. So, after Mary's death, Tinker's sister-in-law, Hannah, also became ill and eventually died later that same year. And if you would remember from my Lemp Mansion episode, that's kind of the way it goes in those days. Just people just die one after another after another. And it's just tragic. But Tinker eventually married again. And his second wife was Jesse Dorr, his first wife's niece. Okay, well, that's all right. <laughs> they adopted a son, Theodore, together and continued staying in the Tinker's Cottage until Tinker's death in 1924. After 75 years as sole residence in the cottage, the Tinker family left their household belongings to trustees of the estate. So, this house, and this is one of the things that they said, uh, Dan said and Larry said on my ex, uh, uh, episode with Expedition Entity, which please listen to. It is a great, a great episode. Um, they left everything. They left their furnishings, the original furnishings, their diaries, and many, many household items. And it is a rare time capsule of life over a century ago. So when you, what I was told is, and I'd love to visit, and if you visited this um, Tinker Cottage, Tinker Swiss Cottage, please send me an uh, email, dairylandfrights at gmail.com, or comment on you know Spotify, YouTube, because I'd love to hear this. So according, or I should say adding to its mystique, the cottage land houses, of course, are on a Native American burial ground, which again, I want to say this again, people, <laughs> I'm not trying to laugh here, but everything's a Native American burial ground, okay? Uh, you might want to go and check under your house and make sure you're not on one. And if you are on one, don't be surprised because the entire United States is a Native, Amer Native American burial ground. So, and the original pioneer site of the Rockford, of Rockford from, from 1834. So there was even a graveyard on the north side of the property from 1844 to 1852, which was later moved to a different location. But I'm going to use the poltergeist line. They moved the gravestones, but they left the bodies. Um... <laughs> So this to me, the 1800s, this is why I love history, is because, again, good chance your house was on a burial ground. Good chance there was some graveyard near your house. And also remember, funerals in the 1800s, typically they would have the funeral in the home. So in other words, imagine your your dad dies, your mom dies, or whoever, family member dies, and you have the funeral in your home, okay? That, to me, oh, wow. That, not only is that tragic, and, and, you know, you're going through all these things, but to have it in your home? Well, oh, that's too much. So, rumors have it, 
And this is now rumors because, like I said, Dan and Larry Frank's edition entity have gone there. I've really seen some paranormal activities, but rumors have it there have been many tragedies, of course, illnesses, and deaths at the cottage while the Tinkers were living there. Like I said, his wife Mary died there. He died. Mr. Tinker died there. Several relatives had all lived and died in that house. So this house is full of death, crammed full of death. So let's get to the paranormal, right? Let's get to the spooky stuff. So Tinker Swift's cottage has had, this is, these are just some of the things, okay? Um, and, and again, I don't know why this isn't more prominent because to me it should be as far as paranormal hauntings. Sounds of children playing have been heard without explanation. So just a bunch of children playing, sounds that. Apparitions in flowing dresses have been seen multiple times. Visitors report being touched or grabbed by unseen forces. Disembodied voices and whistles are often heard. And past investigations have turned up potential EVP recordings. And one of the things, again, like I said, uh, Expedition Entity, check that out. I put a link in here to their uh, investigation of Tinker Swiss Cottage. They love it because they said every time they go in there, they they get something. EVP, touched, apparition, voices, everything. And that is, again, very, 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 very rare. Because remember, when you watch ghost shows, this isn't they walk in and, hey, this happened and that happened. No, it, it takes hours, right? The days. And sometimes you get stuff, sometimes you don't. So... Let's get into more paranormal encounters at this Tinker Swiss cottage. Have also been common for many years, have, like I said, been actively investigated. Between stories and research, visitors and cottage staff alike have formed an overarching theory about all the activity. The Tinker family never left their beloved Swiss chalet. And, and one of the things is, too, is... All their stuff's there. So there are theories out there that you uh, put energy into things, not only you love, but things you just use every day. So like, you know, you use your hairbrush, right? Uh, You use um, different uh, things around the house and all those things soak up your energy. And when you die, you know, they're basically possessed by you. And so that's where all this energy is. And remember, I told you, and I'll put pictures on the website, nothing has changed. It's a time capsule. They left all their things. And and the people who took over this, the society took over this, just left it. Okay? So, like I said, along with numerous encounters with shadow figures, disembodied voices, and strange sounds are frequently heard by the workers and visitors. In certain areas of the homes, the sound, like I said, of children playing, I sometimes heard uh, and then found completely empty. Others have heard strange whistling noises throughout the house. Uh, Whistling to me, if you're in a house and you hear, you can't whistle very well, you're going to be like, uh, okay, that's kind of freaky to hear that, right? And you can hear it crystal clear voices too. Um, People have said that they've heard their names called. They've heard people talk to them. A lot of good AVPs, I guess, out of this. And some of the voices are just said to be so loud, so clear, that they can be heard, heard all the way across the cottage over multiple floors of the house. I mean, think about that. Think about somebody goes, John. And you're on the other side of the cottage and you hear that or someone hears that. That is crazy because usually that does not happen. It's usually like, and you're listening to your VP, right? It's like, kill. (laughs) You're like, you heard kill. Oh, you're kill. 
but you got to kind of really jack up the sound and, and really hear what's going on. But then, of course, you go over there because you're thinking, hey, you know, one of the workers is calling my name, right? Now I'll go over there and, and see what's going on. Or the tour guide's calling my name, whatever. We go over there, of course, nothing. Um, and they don't have an idea of why that is. So the, the, the other thing is, too, with this is people said, you know, again, feeling touched. And from what I'm guessing, from what I've read and researched, it doesn't seem to be an entity like pushing you down the steps. <laughs> like people have been near the steps and they're trying to push you down. Um, that really isn't um, what I found out, but maybe it is, maybe certain people. Uh, but like I said, they rarely describe the sensation as mean or violent, rather more like someone like leading them uh, like a lost child, like grabbing their hand, which by the way, I've talked about that before. Um, <laughs> if I was sitting there and on a tour and had this hand grab me like a child, I'm a father and my kids when they were younger would do that all the time, grab daddy's hand. I'm telling you, that's going to freak me out and scream like a little girl. I'm going to run. <laughs> Well, other people, I'm sure, are going to be like, oh, come here, little boy. I don't know about that. So, again, this is really an unfortunate story like the Lemp Mansion. And I'm going to put some information in here of links, like I said, of, from Expedition Entity, Dan and Larry, who have been there numerous times. I will put pictures of this gorgeous Tinker Swiss cottage. So... I want people to understand that, you know, this is something you may not have heard of. I, I look it up. I think you're going to love it. And I can tell you that I'm going to have more guests on here and hopefully they can talk about this because I want to get some more paranormal investigators. If you are a paranormal investigator, you investigated this or other places, I would love to have you on the show as a guest. Like I said, I've already had Dan and Larry for an expedition entity. So, I love this one. It, it, it seems like a kind of frozen in time, mystery haunted place, and I'd love to check it out. So, also, we're ending up here. I want to say, please rate us five stars. You know, it's just kind of me keeping this together now, floating the boat, hopefully. Um, again, like I said, more guests on and do more things here um, to have some more fun, maybe a investigation with Dan and Larry <laughs> or other paranormal investigators. So like we end our show, say hi to your ghost. Hello ghost and stay spooky.